Hi, my name is Hallie Noodleman, and I'm going to be a junior at Brexel Bravio Heights High School. I did the science internship at South Point Hospital. I worked in the quality management department with Vicki Valente. What is an HVAP accreditation survey? HVAP stands for the Healthcare Facilities Accreditation Program. They do surveys which measure Medicare standards, patient safety, quality improvement, environmental safety, patient treatment, and others. This survey determines if the hospital accepts Medicare clients along with other types of clients. The results are publicly shared, so a poor uh, result in the uh, survey would not be beneficial to the hospital. Benchmarking is measuring consistently with the same methodology. It is comparing to a best performer or another relevant group. Analyzing, or, and it is also analyzing the process to achieve results. Benchmarking is not evidence-based practice or the utilization of a technique in order to get better results, and it is not goal setting. The purpose of the, this project is to determine how prepared the hospital is for the upcoming survey in the fall of 2011. The hypothesis is those who normally do these types of observations in preparation for these surveys are normally not impartial. They are usually um, upper level management people who are well acquainted with the people that are being observed. The third party observer helps to eliminate the bias and it creates a more accurate picture of the hospital's current performance. The data collected facilitates benchmarking for, uh, in order to know how the hospital should be doing compared to others. Improved compliance and achieved targets will ensure that the accrediting body standards are satisfied and that the uh, hospital is prepared for the upcoming survey. So basically, what needs to be improved by the fourth quarter survey? The methodology utilized is direct observation of inpatient units. One surveyor was utilized to ensure that a uh, standard of observations was achieved. Interviews with patients were utilized for some of the indicators that required conversations and asking the patients about themselves. Staff interviews were used to determine why certain things were the way they were, and interventions with staff were used when something was not properly done. A data collection tool was utilized that had 16 indicators, these right here, and 10 opportunities for observation, so 10 columns in order to make an observation. The indicators that we measured were hand hygiene, the presence of liquids at nurses stations or case management areas, the coverage of linens, glucometer cleaning, labeling of specimens per national patient safety goals, stocking and use of isolation caddies, uncovered protected health information, proper storage of oxygen tanks and OSHA approved carts, cleaning of wheelchair after transport, gloving at performed per policy, presence of unattended medications, wearing of sequentials, the presence of PHI on the screens of workstations on wheels or WOWs, and the wearing of badges above the waist. This is the abstract. This is the data collected. It was sorted, so the indicator was on the left, right here. The June percent compliance rate for each indicator was over here. The July percent compliance over here. And then the benchmark for every indicator was determined to be 100% because the nature of each indicator showed that a 100% compliance rate was possible. Also note for transporters wiping wheelchairs in between uses, there were only three observations made, so the data has a small sample size and is thus skewed. Analysis shows that the hospital met only one benchmark both months, the cleaning of transport chairs, which again had a small sample size and thus an accurate picture can't be concluded. Um, oxygen tank storage was met in July, and all other indicators were below the benchmark. These are the indicators that increased in compliancy, and that's nine. And the increase could be due to student observation having a positive effect on compliance or the presence of the student making people more aware of what they were doing. Uh, units exerted more effort towards compliance due to external factors or staffing ratios, an increase in staffing, more time to do things correctly. And then there were four indicators that decreased in compliance, mostly due, having to do with PHI and uh, cleaning. The decrease could be due to new staff and residents that came on July 1st to the hospital. An increase in census, staffing ratios of decreasing staff would make uh, other, uh, would have less people, so thus less time to do things correctly. And the availability of supplies for the glucometer cleaning and the wearing of isolation garb, sometimes supplies weren't available in order to perform an indicator correctly, and thus it wasn't. There was one constant indicator, which was the compliance for the wearing of badges above the waist. It was 87% for both June and July. Some recommendations include 
creating a department-specific report for the uh, five patient units. And this report would be presented to managers and directors at staff meetings, posted on the division, presented to the patient safety committee, and maybe shared in newsletter format. This would make it the knowledge, make the knowledge available that the hospital is not prepared for the upcoming surveys. In conclusion, the hospital is not prepared for the accreditation surveys. The, it has room for improvement in 15 of the 16 indicators. Also, a report must be developed in order to share the findings, and increased awareness should result in greater consci consciousness of the indicators and prepare the hospital for further survey accreditation. Thanks to Vicki Valente, my mentor, and the other women in the office, Laurel Delays, Sandy Neola, Paula Gold, Denise Lake, Cheryl Neal, and thank you to our South Point people, Linda Pasek and Carol Weber. Thanks to South Point Hospital, and thank you to the Cleveland Clinic Office of Civic Education Initiatives.